Hi everyone, welcome back to Jungle Citizens. So now what we're going to do is show you how we propagate our anthurium seeds. This is a, as you see here, if you look up, this is a, an anthurium pedata radiatum. And for the last 11 months we've been having these seeds coming up. Have a go at that. And that is... Anthurium pedata radiatum. So just one quick little look inside here. You can see there's a fresh inflorescence You can see there's an old inflorescence and Most interestingly you can see there's an extremely ripe Fruiting body. Would you call it a fruiting body? I don't even know um, So lots and lots of berries coming on that. They're just starting to change color So another couple of weeks and these guys will be ready to go now. Unfortunately, it came at the worst time because, as you guys know, we were moving. So these are actually now quite desiccated and old. There you go. Today we're going to show you what we do with these seeds. And let's see how many of them survive. Now the thing with anthurium seeds is that they don't survive very long. Uh, they need to keep their moisture, so you can't really send them a seed. In just a few days they'll dry out completely. They need to start their um, propagation process. So because they're still in the berry, they've stayed wet. Some of them maybe are too dry, but we should be able to salvage quite a lot of them. So we're going to go over here and we're going to show you what we do. So here we have our anthurium berries. And the first step is to basically pop them all out from their shell. Or from the fruit. So some of them, as you can see with this one, will have two berries. They're these big green things in here. And there's one. And here is another one. There you go. Some of them will only have one. Now actually these should be a lot more green and happy, but because they're old they're not. But anyway, we'll see how many of them survive. So once they're like that, we then dip them into some water just to give them a little bit of a clean and then we'll keep them there ready for the next one. Now we have to do that with every single one of these fruits. And we see what comes out. So some of them, like this one, may not survive because they're a little too old. They've desiccated, but like this green one, that looks good. And look, there's three in this one. So you don't see that very often with anthuriums. And these are actually very large seeds. Many anthuriums have far smaller seeds and far smaller berries. Here, this one you can see, look, it's actually started. There's the root appearing. So it's actually already started to propagate. This is one of these jobs that involves lots of patience, especially with a plant that takes 11 months for the seeds to come from the point of pollinating the flower. And then sitting and going through all of these seeds. So an anthurium inflorescence is actually made up of thousands of small individual flowers. And the pollination process basically involves individual bits of pollen coming into contact with that female flower and then pollinating it. So these berries, each of these berries, come as a result of one female flower being pollinated. So when you're doing pollinations, you might end up getting just a few berries if you've only got a few of those pollens to successfully pollinate a female flower. Or as in the case of this one, if the pollen has really very effectively got onto that inflorescence and many flowers have been pollinated, then um, you might well end up getting a lot more, as we have in this case. It's seed germination, not propagation. I've been saying this whole time, propagation, and what I mean is germination. If you have left it too late like us and you find some of these completely dry berries, don't take the skins off at all, just take them in like that. And if they're alive, they'll find a way to come. If you take the skins off because they're all dry, you're very likely to damage the seed. It's better off leaving that seed integral and happy. So a lot of people, actually say that you should really clean these very properly and that all of the fruit needs to be removed otherwise there's the potential of fungal infections or everything like that to be perfectly honest it's not really a problem i've ever experienced you can see i've, I've got hands that are full of mud the water that we're using is just rainwater that's collected in 
in a bucket and then um, from there we take it into a box which we'll show you in a minute and that's probably the biggest secret well not secret method but uh there you have it and that is one big pile of anthurium seeds and there is all of their fruity pulp So now we have our pile of anthurium seeds. What we need to do is get some water and then we chuck them all inside. So they all go inside, including the dried up ones. And you can chuck dried up ones in the water for 10-15 minutes, let them soak and then you can try and get the skins off as well. So that's that. Now, <laughs> my hand doesn't fit. <laughs> So normally what you do is you sort of give them a nice wash like that, but I actually can't because my hand doesn't fit. So, okay, I'll do it in there. So you just want to give them a nice little clean. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you can see this is not a, not an approach that is particularly scientific, but it works. So then we get out all of the seeds and then we have to take them to our germination container which you can see behind me. So the thing with anthuriums, right, is that they come from wet places, tropical rainforests very often, or at least monsoon forests. And generally they therefore really need that kind of high humidity environment to be able to germinate. If they're too dry, they just simply will die. So what we do is get one of these clear boxes even consi considering that we, we live in a, a wet area. In the monsoon, it's easy. They'll just basically germinate by themselves. But as it gets drier like this in the dry season, we need to use a box. So in this box, we've got sphagnum moss. It's very important to note that not all sphagnum moss is born equal. Some is a lot better. Uh, so we've had to order many different types of sphagnum moss from different places to find one fairly good supplier. So this is actually living sphagnum moss. You can see there's a couple of green bits coming out. It's very soft, it's very light, it's relatively dense compared to a lot of the dry sphagnum moss that you find. So this is the one that we found that works best. You might well have to try a couple of different suppliers or options to work out which one is best. But then we basically just go in and stick the seeds. Now you can take lots of time over this, put them in neat little rows and stuff like that, but to be honest I can never really be bothered. So we're just going to sprinkle them in like this. So we're just going to get the last few seeds out from here. Make sure we don't miss any. Obviously when you have a clear glass and clear water that's a lot easier. And get these all sprinkled into here. And then we're going to go and show you one that we made earlier. Actually one that we made a few months earlier. So they're also from the same mother plant, the same Pedato radiatum. Uh, but we have germinated them a couple of months back actually before the move. Yeah, they've been doing well in a similar setup. So we'll go now and show you those. So this is a box we did earlier. You'll see the, the top is on because that holds more humidity and it maintains the moisture. And here you can see these guys coming. Uh, there's a Philodendron Fibrocatophyllum in there as well, just to try and keep it alive for the time being but all of these leaves you see coming up these are all seedlings and from that same Pedata radiata mother so what I'm going to do is pull out one of them so here you can see you have the seed and then you have this very very strong growth coming so actually there's the root do you see there's the root and it's developing really well because it has lots of air and yet it also has lots of moisture. So you can see there's two actually. Here they're growing really well. So that's why sphagnum moss is really brilliant for, for doing this job because it really effectively promotes the root growth and allows for that first stage to be very successful. So we normally leave them in this environment until they have two leaves, sometimes three leaves and a decent amount of root. And then when we plant them, we plant them in a relatively small pot. It seems anthuriums don't really like to have lots of breathing space, especially when they're young. 
So we create a nice little root ball like this of the moss. And then in the pot itself, we have a very chunky aerated medium. So the soil that we make ourselves, uh, but with lots of larger pieces, like pieces of coconut husk or whatever. And then that goes into a pot that's probably about four or five inches in diameter. And then it's ready for its next stage. One more quick tip that's well worth knowing about. We use these boxes a lot and this sphagnum moss a lot because it's very helpful if you're moving or if you're taking a top cut or whatever. It's a very, very useful way to keep plants alive and actually to get them thriving temporarily. Uh, it's very good to keep the lid on because if the lid is kept on then all of the moisture is retained. But you can see even in the sort of the violence of the move and the fact this is quite dry actually, I need to add some water. You have plants like this guy, this is a, an Anthurium baloanum and you see the root growth coming there. So especially where it's in contact with the moss, you can see lots of really good roots coming. So we've got a few of these boxes still kind of just laying around that are our kind of critical care boxes, so to speak. And um, yeah, it's a very useful little, little trick or tip to know. Here's another one. This is a papi. And again, you can see the old roots are really quite bad. They weren't happy being removed from where they were, but this is the new root coming, which is really happy. So these guys will go back in here. Actually, they need a lot more sphagnum moss, but we've run out because we've had to use it for the seedling. So these guys hopefully are going to have to hold on for a few more days. We're going to have to get some water into them. And then, um, yeah, get them their new sphagnum moss. While we're here talking about the propagation and germination of the seeds, we thought we might as well show you also how we pollinate the flowers. So here you can see this is one of our Magnificum hybrid. She's very nice. Uh, you can see the mess with all of the plants because they've been taken out of our amazing forest nursery and now we're having to kind of triage them. Uh, so this is a female flower, you can see. I don't know if you can just yeah. about see, there's some very, very small balls of liquid so if you touch it, you can sense that it's a little bit wet. You can see where the mud has come a little bit. So this is a female. So basically the flower is female when it has these little balls of liquid. And these balls of liquid are what you need to attach the pollen onto. So for that, we need to find a pollinating, a male phase flower. So we'll just have a little look around and see what male flowers we can find. It, okay, here we have a couple. Oh, see that damsonfly. So both of these are male, and you can tell they're male because they're no longer... Mm -hmm. There you go. They're no longer giving up fluid, but they are giving up pollen. So if I do this with my hands, you'll see on my finger... Is it too bright? There, you can see just about that pollen. We'll do it on a few more. If we take this off... So we literally just use our hands for this, and rub our hands full with the pollen. So just see if you can get that. No, you can just about see all of that kind of dust on my finger. So that's the pollen. This is what you need. Many people use uh, paint brushes or cotton swabs or all sorts of different things. We basically just use our hands. We get them on like that. And then the moment of magic, the moment of true intimacy for an anthurium because we're now going to put the male pollen onto the female flower and to do that we literally just rub it like this so wherever the fluid is already coming out is an area that can be pollinated so there wasn't too much pollen it was quite a small flower on that male those male flowers but this should give us some seeds so we basically just rub it on like that and that's it that is the entire process. Now, if we have a little look around, maybe we can see some seeds coming. Oh, look over here on the same plant. Here we have a couple of inflorescences. Stay here. Where the seeds are starting to come out. 
So that's about six weeks, eight weeks into when the seed, the thing has been pollinated, the flower. And what generally happens is the spathe will go, sorry, the spadix will go green and then you'll start seeing these little berries forming. So be patient. It sometimes takes a week or two for the flower to start changing color, but it will eventually if it's successful. And then you will start getting some baby anthuriums. Okay, guys, thank you very much. It was nice to see you again, and I hope this gave you some good information on anthurium pollination, propagation, seed germination, all of this good stuff. If you have any questions or comments, please chuck them down in the text boxes below. And also don't forget to subscribe because it makes a massive difference to us. Thank you very much, and see you soon.